Are the Brewers as good as their record is? Are the Cardinals as bad as their record is? We answer those questions and more as Locked on Brewers host Chuck Freeman joins us today for this special crossover episode of Locked on Cardinals. You are Locked on Cardinals, your daily St. Louis Cardinals podcast. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey there, Cardinals and Brewers fans. I'm J.D. Hafford, and I'm a national radio sports anchor, born and raised in the Lou, and a lifetime Cardinals fan. And I'm your host for Locked On Cardinals, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, covering your team every day. You can follow me on Twitter, X, at J.D. Sports Radio. You can follow the podcast at LO underscore Cardinals. want to thank those of you who make Locked On Cardinals and Locked On Brewers your first listen every day. We're free and available wherever you get your podcasts. You can also find us on YouTube. Make sure you come by both of our youtube sites you like subscribe and comment don't be afraid to interact with us and chat with us hit that notification button so you know when the new episodes are posted this is a show serving cardinal nation and giving the best fans in baseball all of the info about the birds on the bat we're also sharing it today with the brewers fans and this episode is brought to you by prize picks the easiest and most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports go to prizepicks.com slash locked on mlb and use code all lowercase locked on mlb for a first deposit match up to $100. All right, before we start getting into all the nitty gritties here, I want to introduce and welcome in for my Cardinals fans who may not be familiar with uh, Chuck Freeman yet from Locked On Brewers. Chuck, you've been covering the Brewers and pretty much Wisconsin sports in general for, for how long now? Well, I started way back when I was in high school. I've been covering the team and, uh, and way back, you know, the early 80s. Uh, second year, covered the team. The Brewers went to the World Series against the Cardinals, and yeah. never would I have guessed that we'd be division rivals and develop this nice little rivalry <laughs> between the two teams way back when I was a teenager. But here we are, and uh, yeah, I mean, just like you, you get them on us Google, Spotify, Apple, YouTube, get the video, and uh, longtime sportscaster here in Wisconsin. And looking forward to this weekend series. And I always love doing a podcast with you because every time if people can see us on YouTube, somehow the locker room in St. Louis is always clear. Man, how do you get nobody to walk in back to you and make faces? That's amazing. I, I tape it off and I have security to take <laughs> care of people in the back, make sure nobody's in my uh, in my way. This is very important stuff. Uh, Chuck, I'm glad you brought up the 82 series, by the way, because mm -hmm. uh, recently the uh, passing of former Cardinals manager Whitey Herzog, who was the manager of that Cardinals team against the Brewers in that 82 World Series. Any thoughts on uh, Whitey and the time that he was a manager in St. Louis from uh, a Milwaukee Brewers point of view? Well, just a great manager and I remember him more as the manager of the Kansas City Royals because yeah. the Brewers were in the American League and he was the manager in the late 70s on those great George Brett teams. And, you know, you know what that was all about. Um, and then in 82, uh, I thought the Brewers had the better team in 82 and the Cardinals ended up winning. Brewers had five Hall of Famers, future Hall of Famers in that team. And the Cardinals, with the help of a former Brewer, Daryl Porter, helped beat the Brewers in 82 World Series. And I remember in 82... When the Brewers lost, I was 15 years old thinking, ah, they'll be back. And still, here we are, 42 years later, <laughs> still have not been back to the World Series. Can't win a uh, National League pennant now to save our lives. But I'm a great manager, one of the all-time great managers. There's no doubt about it. Um, and I was sorry to see, but he lived a great life. I'm 92, yeah. 93 years old, whatever it was. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, he beat the Brewers in the only World Series here in Milwaukee. Haven't had one since. and. Who knows what another one's going to come? Well, so far, uh, the Brewers have done well this year. I want to take you back to last year real quick. Uh, the Brewers, in the end, ended up running away with the NL Central. 92 wins, had a nine-game gap between them and second-place Chicago. But as often happens in the playoffs, uh, they run into the hot wildcard team, right? Mm -hmm. The Arizona Diamondbacks come through, sweep them in two games in the NL wildcard series on their way to a berth in the World Series where they would uh, lose to the Texas Rangers. And the Cardinals fans understand your pain, Chuck. 2022, same thing happened. They got swept in the wild card round by the hot wild card team uh, at the time, which was the Philadelphia Phillies, who ended up going to the World Series and losing to the American League team, which was the Houston Astros. So this offseason, the two organizations tackled things very much differently. Uh, the Cardinals went out and signed or traded for 10 new pitchers to join their pitching staff, just revamp the whole thing. While the Brewers, they lose their manager in Craig Council, one of the best in baseball. 
to the slimy Cubs, by the way. Yeah, they trade the away their ace, Corbin Burns, to the Baltimore Orioles. They re-sign Brandon Woodruff, but you know we think he's going to be out for the rest of the season anyway. And on top of those two being absent from the current staff, they've also lost one of the best relief pitchers in baseball and a St. Louis native in Devin Williams, who's on the shelf with a back injury. And yet here we are a couple of weeks into the season and the Brewers, they're in first place again. They're 11 and six. So yeah. let's start with the pitching side of things first. How, how the hell, Chuck, do you lose those three big guns and not only stay afloat, but continue to be a first place team? And Garrett Mitchell, the starting center fielder, um, but he will be back in, in early June. Perkins has been a nice, done a nice job. Had a game winning base hit on on Thursday, but yeah, they've been scoring a lot of runs, uh, doing well with runners in scoring position. C unlike the Cardinals, who are off to a slow start offensively, the Brewers have been just quite the opposite. Now lately, the Brewers are coming back a little bit to the mean. Last three games, they're not hitting as well or with runners in scoring position all that well. Uh, they were almost, well, no hitter. Uh, Michael King and the Padres took a no hitter into the seventh inning against the Brewers on, on Thursday or on Wednesday, and they were able to win the game. But offensively, they've been able to make up. Now, is this going to, is the, is this going to trend going to continue? Are they going to score seven or eight runs a game? Highly unlikely. Okay. Um, the pitching is the biggest part. Uh, what worries me. And as you know, the 162 game schedule is the great endurance race in baseball and i feel it's eventually going to catch up with them not having devin williams eventually going to catch up with them um you know that's this this weekend series we were just talking about it on local tv here in milwaukee and i think you know i feel like every series support this is a big series early series between these two teams you guys are trying to turn it around offensively and i know you um had a three and three road trip I thought you guys were going to win that final game in Oakland yesterday after getting off to that three and two lead, uh, three to two lead. But interesting series. The Brewers are throwing their best pitcher, Freddie Peralta. But when you look at Freddie Peralta, he's their best pitcher right now. And going into the season, he's the number one, but a number one uh, on this team. He probably should be a number three starter on most teams. Um, but I'm excited for this series to start. And yeah, great test for both teams because, uh, you know, can Milwaukee keep that offense going and can the Cardinals and along with Paul Goldschmidt finally turn things around for them? <laughs> well, it's funny that you say Freddie Peralta would be a number three uh, elsewhere. I don't think he'd be a number three on the Cardinals pitching staff. He'd be right up there along with Sonny Gray because he's been really good so far. 2-0 mm -hmm. record, a 2.55 ERA. He's got 26 strikeouts in 17 and two-thirds innings, and he's going to be the starter uh, on Friday night. So uh, Freddie Peralta, uh, I underestimated him, at least the, the way he started the season so far. I, I knew he was a good pitcher. I, I did not expect him to lead this staff as well as he has thus far so he's been a very big surprise to me as far as uh being quite as dominant as he's been so far as far as the cardinals pitching staff uh i mentioned that they've got a whole bunch of new pitchers uh in the rotation and in the bullpen uh the pitching has actually been pretty darn good for the mm -hmm. cardinals so far when you look at who the names they were that they added guys like a lance lynn and a kyle gibson which when you when you saw their stats you're like well what are they supposed to be good They've been better than I think a lot of people thought they were going to be uh, as far as a team. ERA, 3.74, their 10th best in the league. Uh, they've induced 19 double plays. I, I will point that out because they've been able to escape some jams due to the double play ball. That's the third most double plays turned in the league so far. Uh, they're not walking a ton of people. They're not mm -hmm. just putting people on 2.87 per nine, which is ninth best. Uh, strikeout to walk ratio 2.85 also the ninth best they've only hit two batters so uh, we're not going to injure you that's great uh which is tied for tops in the league they still give up a ton of hits and you mentioned the brewers offense which we're going to get to here in just a few minutes but uh the cardinals pitching staff does give up a ton of hits 158 ninth highest total and the long ball is something that has burned them Quite often so far this year, 23 given up thus far, fourth highest total in the league. Uh, Sonny Gray returning has been, been a huge addition since coming off the IL, hasn't allowed a run in his first two starts covering 11 innings. He'll be the scheduled starter on Sunday. Uh, Lance Lynn, 2.18 ERA. Nice. I, I did not expect that from uh, Lance Lynn after what we saw last year. Mm -hmm. uh, the two guys that have been inconsistent to start the year just so happen to be the starters on Friday and Saturday, Kyle Gibson 
and Miles Michaelis. Uh, Gibson had a really good first start against the Padres, but ended up getting crushed by the Padres, gave up six runs in the first inning against them, uh, then was throwing well against the Diamondbacks before a three-run shot uh, put the loss on him uh, in Arizona. He's given up five dingers already, Chuck, uh, which is the second highest amount in the league. Michaelis wasn't great against the Dodgers in his opener, was much better against the Padres in Philly, was looking really good through four against Arizona before the wheels fell off. So you're getting two of the most inconsistent starters that the Cardinals have to offer in games one and two before Sonny Gray comes in and uh, has so far looked like the ace that they thought they were getting after uh, finishing second in the AL Cy Young Award voting last year. But we're going to get into the offenses next, Chuck. So uh, get your stats ready. We're going to talk about both teams because one has been really good. One has not. And uh, Chuck alluded to which one was which. We'll have more for you on the crossover of Locked on Cardinals and Locked on Brewers. It's playoff time in the NBA and NHL. Baseball's in full swing. You know this. And FanDuel is your place to bet on every single game. You're going to put some money on the Brewers this weekend. You're going to put some money on the Cardinals. How you feeling? Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets. That's guaranteed, by the way. That's $150. Win or lose. Do you understand that, right? You place the bet, and whether you win or lose, you still get $150. And 50 bucks in bonus bets. That's, that's a pretty good deal. And you can bet on everything. Like I said, you want to go baseball, you want to go Milwaukee, you want to go St. Louis or any of the other teams around the league. You can do that. Or you can start talking about NHL, Stanley Cup playoffs right around the corner. You've got the uh, NBA playoff stuff going on right now, too. So slap shots, home runs, slam dunks, all of it is available on the app that is safe, secure, and easy to use. So if you haven't joined yet, what are you waiting for? Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and make your first bet an automatic win. Once again, right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets guaranteed. FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Are you watching Fox Sports or ESPN on your TV all day? Have to turn down the volume with all of the shouting? Well, make that switch to Locked On Sports today. It's a free 24-7 sports streaming channel program for you every day to bring you the biggest stories, and you, you get it without all the screaming. There's no yelling at you. Locked On Sports today brings you can't miss analysis. You get opinions. You get news. And it's all streaming 24-7 on YouTube or the free Amazon Fire TV channels app. It's part of the Locked On Podcast Network your team every day. I was actually watching the, uh, the the channel last night because they were doing their their mock drafts, Chuck. The NFL mock draft mm -hmm. happened uh, on Wednesday night, and uh, that was interesting. Uh, they, had, they had the Packers taking Cooper DeGene. Out, out of Iowa, in case you're okay. wondering, at 25. So I uh, figured you you were all over that. You knew that, Chuck. <laughs> well, you know, the the right now the draft is obviously huge in Wisconsin here because the Packers, as mm -hmm. much as we love the Milwaukee Brewers, the Packers are number one. Yeah, the Packers no, are number geez. one. Keep talking, Packers Chuck. are one. Packers want to. Oh, Marmo, I see, is calling him out of the locker room here, and he's probably. Oh, he's getting a cheese hat. Okay. Because I don't know well, if you, you knew this, Chuck, but I, I'm a huge Packers fan. Huge. No, I didn't Love know the that. How, how did that happen? Growing up in St. Louis, uh, when I was young, we didn't have a football team. <laughs> okay. So I migrated to whoever was the biggest rival of anything Chicago, because that's what okay. we do in St. Louis. We we go against Chicago teams. And so yeah. who do the Bears hate? They hate the Packers. So I was like, all right, I'm going to go to the Packers. Who stunk at the time? And then that, that Brett Favre guy showed up, and things turned around rather quickly, and that's kind of how it's been. Even when the Rams came to town in St. Louis, like I watched the Rams. I rooted for them. I wanted to see them do good. Unless they played the Packers. And okay. then I was all go pack go. And uh, then the Rams, unfortunately, went back to L.A., which was a, a disgusting thing by the NFL. But anyway, so I'm all over the Packers. And uh, if they can land Cooper to Gene at 25, I'm all for it. I think that's a, a heck of a pick. Uh, thank you guys for making Locked on Cardinals and Locked on Brewers your first listen every day. Leave your comments on YouTube as well as on Twitter X anytime you want. Your feedback is always welcome. And encourage. Once again, Chuck Freeman, host of Locked on Brewers, here for this crossover episode leading up to the NL Central clash this weekend between the first place Brewers and the last place Cardinals. They are in last place. They're not that far back, but they are in last place. So let's talk about the offense, Chuck. You mentioned it a little bit earlier. Brew Crew has been one of the top hitting teams in the league so far. Where is the production coming from? And, uh, 
Do you guys have the best Contreras on your team? Let's answer that. Well, it's funny because me and my 12 year old, my 12 year old, who <laughs> I have a 12 year old who likes the Cubs. Imagine Ugh. that. Ugh. Yes. And he wants an Ella de la Cruz jersey of the Reds. And I told Jeff Carr, a buddy from Lockdown Reds, he will <laughs> never get one of those. Um, so, uh, but yeah, Contreras has been leading the team. Now, they they picked him up last year, before last year, and he was great. He was their offensive MVP last year. No one expected that. And this year, he's hitting like a league MVP through the first part of the season, coming up with clutch hits, just had the 12-game hitting streak come to an end. So it starts with him. When they got him, they never expected him to be one of the focal points offensively. They're missing Christian Yelich. He went on the injured list with a back injury. Uh, Reese Hoskins is playing first base. Has hit three home runs so far. Still trying to find his way. Bryce Terang has been excellent at second base so far defensively and with the with the stick, uh, doing really well. Outfield, I mentioned Blake Perkins earlier. Center field, been a pleasant surprise. Didn't know if he was going to make the team coming out of camp. Has, and with the injury to Garrett Mitchell, has been fantastic. Freelich, been getting some big, big hits at the plate uh, in the middle part of that order. He's been fantastic. Adamas, the veteran on this team, some big hits, home runs as well. So I think a lot of people, J.D., JD have been uh, contributing to the offense so far. As I mentioned, the last three games, not as much as the first several. So offensively, been really well. They've been stealing. They've been running the bases. They've been playing a little ABC baseball. Get them on, get them over, get them in, which has been fantastic. Now, when I look at you guys, I am struggling. I saw Goldschmidt's numbers today, and that <laughs> I don't know if I like that because – I don't want the Brewers to be the tonic for some of those guys offensively for struggling and turning it around this series. Hey, you guys are off to a, a slow start by Cardinals. And I remember last year, JD, when um, you know we talked when you guys got off to that slow start, I was still worried. You guys were 14 games over the under the 500 mark, and I was still saying on the shows here in Milwaukee, watch out for the Cardinals. Don't take that for granted whatsoever. Now you guys never turned it around, but still, I don't care where you guys are, you guys could have lost the first 16 games of the season. <laughs> you guys are still always going to be a threat. Yeah. And that's one thing uh, the, the fan base in St. Louis, um, they're, they're, they're unsettled right now because even though they were warned that April was going to be a, a tough one for the Cardinals from the get go, because uh, traveling to the West, coming back, going back out to the West and mm -hmm. playing a lot of really good teams uh, other than, the Marlins, really? Uh, everybody else has been pretty good in Oakland. Obviously, we just got done with Oakland, but even they've been playing all right baseball. It's not like they've been like you know the no. White Sox or something. Just you know? nobody it's goes big. to their games. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's the thing. Nobody's there to watch. We had like three thousand people as an announced attendance uh, on one of the games. I think it was Tuesday's game, which mm -hmm. is like crazy to me that and only three thousand people come out there. And I watched yesterday's game. When I got home, but I got home with the Brewers game because we started a couple hours before you guys did, and we had a quick game. And I was watching the game. There had to be 800, 900 people yeah. in Oakland for the final game of that series against the Cardinals. Yeah, it's sad <laughs> and uh, it's tough to watch. You feel bad. You feel yeah. bad for them. Uh, speaking of touch to wa tough to watch, you mentioned the Cardinals offense, guys like Paul Goldschmidt. Uh, as a whole, the team is really, really struggling. All right, eighth lowest batting average in baseball, 226, second lowest home run total. In the league, if you had to take a guess, Chuck, don't cheat. How many home runs do you think uh, a lineup that consists of Paul Goldschmidt, Nolan Arenado, Jordan Walker, Nolan Gorman, how, and Lars Newbar just getting back? But how many home runs do you think they've hit the so far? If you had to guess, six. <laughs> well, that's way worse than that than what they're at. They're actually at thirteen, Chuck. Okay. Jeez, I, well, uh, I, I was I was shooting low. I was shooting low. <laughs> Second lowest home run total in the league, though, at 13. Yeah. Uh, fifth lowest run total at 70. Uh, they keep getting stuck on the number three. That's where they, they score three, and then they're done. That's, a, that's all they get. It's really bizarre how many times they've done that so far this year. Uh, the one thing that they've been pretty good at is getting hit by pitches, if that counts, 12, third highest. And I, I don't know where you find – catcher's interference stats, but we've had like three of those go Us our too. way as well. Is that so. a thing in the league? Is that something <laughs> when I believe that uh, we've had, we have had a couple of those too in our team. I'm like, I, God, it must be going around. Yeah. It's something with uh, the way that the catchers are reaching for the balls, <laughs> trying to frame these days, which is leading to it. At least mm -hmm. that's what I'm told. But uh, you mentioned Paul Goldschmidt ha has gotten off to a rough start, even though 
Everybody keeps saying, be patient, be patient. He's going to be fine. Be patient. I mean, you saw the slide last year. He's not getting any younger. Had a tough spring. And here he is two weeks into the season, almost three weeks. He's hitting 182. Has one extra base hit, Chuck. One. Oh. And he did that on opening day when he hit a home run. Hasn't had one since. It's it's bizarre. And I genuinely healthy. wish he was I wish we were going to Milwaukee for this series because Paul uh notoriously pretty good hitter in Milwaukee. But uh okay. you know, we're gonna be a, we're gonna be a Bush Stadium, so no such luck on his side for that one. Uh Nolan Gorman had a one two home run game so far this year. Outside of that, he's got just one dinger. Uh, is striking out a ton. Jordan Walker hasn't been able to put anything together. They're pitching him away, 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 and he's taking a few of them here and there. He's trying to adjust, but he's a young hitter. You know, it's going to take some time. And then the center field spot, they're just getting no offense whatsoever. As a combined uh, center field duo, Victor Scott the second, who's a rookie, who shouldn't even be in the major leagues right now. He's supposed to be at AAA. And then Michael Ciani, who they picked up on waivers from the Reds last year, uh, combined they're hitting under 100 as the center field duo so far. So that's been tough. Nolan Arenado, uh, William Contreras' older brother, Wilson Contreras, he's looked really, really good. Uh, got hit on the hand in San Diego. So uh, he had some uh, some games where he had to sit out. So his numbers might be a little bit low because of that. But uh, as he's gotten healthier with that hand, he's starting to turn it around, uh, has continued his hot hitting from what he was doing in the second half last year where, where he was huge. Uh, Brendan Donovan's been pretty good at the top of the lineup, although he keeps getting hit by pitches and suffering weird <laughs> injuries too. Just got Lars Newbar back, and uh, we're still missing guys like uh, Tommy Edmond and Dylan Carlson, uh, some big names that were scheduled to be our center fielders mm -hmm. and uh, couldn't do that because of injuries so far. So they're progressing, but they won't be around for this series. Uh, some highlights of uh, the offense have really been a couple of rookies, Mason Wynn, our shortstop, and then Ivan Herrera, who's a rookie catcher, who is the backup to Wilson, but he's been hitting so well, Chuck, that they're having a tough time not putting him in the lineup. And I know it's difficult when you do that because you're like, well, yeah, you want your best hitters in there. But if one of those catchers goes down in a game, you don't have a third one on the roster. So it's no. it's tough to keep both of them in the lineup at the same time, even though Ivan Herrera has been hitting as well as he has so far this year. But Mason Wynn has been uh, a breath of fresh air at shortstop, hitting 347 so far, Chuck. Uh, and they've had him down in the order. Some people have been clamoring about moving him up a little bit. Maybe that should be something that they do and move Paul Goldschmidt down. I don't know if that's a realistic thing that manager Ali Marmol will ever do to move Paul Goldschmidt out of that number two spot and drop him as low as like a six or a seven despite – all the struggles, I, I feel like he's going to continue to keep Goldie up there at the top of the lineup. And uh, as long as he continues to struggle and Gorman does, and they're both hitting in the in the meat of this order, it just it's it's a rally killer almost every single time. So uh, something that I, I would imagine the Brewers pitchers are going to try to take advantage of as much as possible in this series. Is there a, is there a guy in the lineup other than Goldie that you have your eye on that uh, you're kind of like? Eh. We're gonna. We're, 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 I'm gonna keep an eye on this guy. This guy's pretty dangerous. Well, they're all I, to me. All those names that you mentioned always strike fear in my heart because uh, I feel like they always. I, you know, those guys are all tough outs, and I'm just surprised to see the struggle the way it is mm -hmm. uh, with with the Cardinals and on all those bats because you guys. Have, I mean, you're good at the corner. You're great at the corners, and everywhere else. I mean, fundamentally so sound the team has been. Um, uh, you know, I just I, I I'm surprised that the Cardinals are struggling offensively, and I hope now the Brewer pitching. Um, I told you about the starting staff. The bullpen has been taxed a little bit because uh, the Brewers had to bullpen their way through a game on on Wednesday. They used all five relievers to throw nine shutout innings, so a couple of those guys might not be pitching in maybe early in the series. I saw you know we're talking about FanDuel. The Brewers are favored in Friday night's game with Peralta on the hill. It's like. That scares me already if the Brewers are favored going into, <laughs> into St. Louis. But I got to ask you about Marmol. You know, after the tough season that they had last year, mm -hmm. and I'm sure because fans are, it's like this in every major league city. Sure. What's the reaction? Is there a long leash, short leash for Marmol? Is he good for the all season? What's, what's that status like? Well, um, most people thought that after last, last year's 
catastrophic season that he was coming into his last year of his contract. And what seemed to be the plan, at least for most fans, was that Yadier Molina, former catcher, mm -hmm. Cardinal legend, yeah. was going to come in and become the next manager of the Cardinals. If Ali had a bad year this year, they didn't live up to expectations this year, that it was going to be a transition where Yadi would come in, Ali would go out, and that's just the way it was going to be. It looked like the season was going to be set up for failure for Ali to be honest, which was a tough spot. And they yeah. made the announcement in the offseason that Yachty was going to be a special assistant. He was going to be around. He was actually going to be in the dugout for a few Whoa. games and stuff. And I always said it was going to be weird to have a guy that is gunning for your spot, just looking over your shoulder the whole time. And I, I was oh, like, God, yeah. a weird spot to Any, be. Anytime somebody's named a special assistant, it's like, oh, boy, that, yeah. that was with Craig Council. He was a special assistant in the front office. It's like, you know, he's the manager of the team. Yeah, well, this offseason, before the regular season got underway, they decided to sign Ali Marmol to an extension. They were like, look, yeah. we don't want it to feel that way. We don't want him going into the season thinking we're setting him up just to take the job away from him. Like, we want him to know that they're, that we believe in him and he's got job security. And guess what? Since that's happened, there has not been a mention of Yadier Molina anywhere. Within okay. the Cardinals organization, we haven't heard a peep. We don't know where he is. He was supposed to show up during spring training. He was. They, they said, "Well, we're giving him some time to be with his family. He'll probably show up when minor league camp gets underway." And it has been radio silence ever since. There has not been a word about Yadier Molina and what his role is with this organization anymore. And we're talking about the middle of April now, and nobody's heard from him. Nobody's seen him. Like, is he pulling a paycheck from the Cardinals? Still, we don't know. We have well, no that's, idea. Well, but well that's nothing for Marmol, though, because you don't need a manager. A manager doesn't need somebody looking over his shoulder. And sure. he does, he, he's trying to do his job. Yeah. They don't and, need that. And, I was surprised. All, from what the GM, you know, the president of baseball operations, John Mozalak, has said is that they, they, they're not blaming him for what happened last year. It was their fault. They put together a team mm -hmm. that was just not good enough. They, they thought they were going to have better results from certain people. It didn't happen. And they did go out and make a lot of changes this year to make sure that that didn't happen. But here we are, and they're in last place again. So yeah. uh, the natives are restless as far as uh, Ali Marmol, and they continue to want to to blame him and blame the coaching of staff for a it's lot like of these first starts. I was just surprised they got rid of Schilte to begin with. He was just in here, here with the Padres. You know, I, that, I thought he was a good man, a real solid manager. Well, he, only, he only won one manager of the year award in his three years and was up yeah. for it in that last year before they canned him. Uh, that became an, uh, an issue between him and the front office. They uh, didn't see eye to eye. Philosophical differences was the narrative. And uh, they showed him the door. Mm -hmm. And he is at uh, until this year, hadn't been a manager in the league since. So mm -hmm. uh, it's uh, it, it's been an interesting and very tumultuous couple of years with the St. Louis Cardinals, and uh, they're hoping for things to be better this year here in 2024. So far, losing record. They're 9-10. and 10. So uh, we're going to get our, I guess, predictions or what we're going to look for in the series, our, our, our picks to click. We'll have all of that coming up for you more on this crossover episode between Locked on Cardinals and Locked on Brewers. Baseball season is officially underway. Don't miss your chance to add your favorite players from the diamond in your prize picks entries. Whether it's strikeouts, RBIs, first inning runs, you can take your pick of more or less and add them to your prize picks entry today. Get in on the playoff action and win up to 100 times your money on prize picks as you and the world's best players take the game to a new level during basketball's postseason, which is going on. And it is, they got the, the play in tournament stuff is happening and it's uh, been pretty darn exciting if you haven't been watching. Uh, you might want to tune in and you can win some money on it uh, with prize picks. Uh, I, I've mentioned this before, Chuck. My favorite aspect about prize picks is that it's simple and it's quick. You know, I, I'm not screwing around trying to find things and try to figure out what, what am I doing on this app? I don't get it. I understand it. It's very simple to use and you can make your picks and submit your entries and do it in less than 60 seconds. And the other side of it that's really quick is when you do win your money, which you will on prize picks, uh, you get your money quick. They, they pay you out right away. Quick withdrawals, easy gameplay, an enormous selection of players and stat types. That's what makes prize picks the number one daily fantasy sports app. So download the app today. Use the code locked on MLB for a first deposit match up to $100. Download the app today. Use the code lowercase L O C K E D O N M L B. For a first deposit match up to $100, pick more, pick less. It's that easy. 
with prize picks. Locked on has launched the first ever national sports 24 seven streaming channel on YouTube. And now it's also available on Amazon fire TV and the free fire TV channels app locked on sports today is here for you. 24 seven covering the top sports stories of the day with the local experts of locked on plus our national shows covering every league Find locked on sports today. Now available on the free fire TV channels app. All right, Chuck Friedman lock on brewers host time to make your picks on who you think is going to shine in this weekend series. Uh, in St. Louis, Bush Stadium. It all starts Friday night, goes on through the weekend. Who are you looking for offensively to be your pick to click on the Brewer side of things? Sal Freelich. I think Sal Freelich's going to have a real good weekend. I, I just love the fundamentally goes to all fields. He's not trying to pull the ball. He's not trying to yank the ball out of the ballpark. I think Sal Freelich. And I have a hunch that Reese Hoskins is going to have a big weekend. A little slow offensively for Reese. Great pickup for the Brewers. I think he's in a big summer. I still think he's going to hit 30 to 35 home runs on this team. I'm going to go with Reese Hoskins. Not a bad pick. Uh, the guy I'm interested in on your side of things, by the way, Bryce Terang. Uh, if there's one thing that I want to point out is that uh, nine stolen bases, I think is where he's at. Which is, you know, yep. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the Cardinals have thrown out one base dealer so Ooh. far this year. One. That's interesting. And so I the Brewers think are... they've given up. I for, I'm trying to remember off the top of my head. I think there's like 16 stolen bases against. Like it's something. Oh. It's something ridiculous. So and the Brewers they've only caught one. So all that's the time. a guy. Yeah. That is a guy that I would keep my eye on yeah, if I was okay. the Cardinals because if he gets on base, mm -hmm. um, he could do some damage out there on the base pass, uh, running around like that. Uh, offensively for the Cardinals, uh, I'm going to go with Nolan Arenado, who had gotten off to a slow start. I know that's a lame pick because. It's Nolan Arenado, right? But here's the thing. Slow start to the season to a point where uh, even I use the term broken when watching him swing. He was so off to start the year. And slowly but surely, you're starting to see him pull the ball with authority. He's also, when they're going to throw him away, he's been taking it to the opposite field, which is great. Finally hit his first home run since August of last year, Chuck. Finally hit That's that. Amazing. Uh, <laughs> so uh but That's he swings it a lot better thought he had another one in oakland but oakland's the oakland coliseum like i mean it's like it's the polo runs. yeah it, it wasn't a problem for the a's hitting home runs they hit one in every game cardinals didn't hit any in oakland but uh one of them looked like it would have been out of every ballpark except for oakland and uh that was a nolan arenado deep fly to left field so uh give me nolan arenado because he's just He's headed in the right direction. Things are starting to look really, really good for Nolan. And he's playing really well defensively, too. So when that's working out for him, it all starts to come together with him at the plate as well. Pitching-wise, who do we look out for in Milwaukee, buddy? And by the way, if you guys don't want Nolan Ar Arenado, people are complaining about him, we'll <laughs> gladly take him off your hands. I'll bet gladly. you would. I know a and lot I'd of people would. Goldschmidt in a second, too. I'd take him in a second, too, no matter how much he's struggling pitching. I think Freddie. I do like Freddie. He uh, I was talking about, you know, the Brewers are favored at the first game. Freddie's been their best pitcher, best starting pitcher. He's pitched real good in all his starts. Probably is due for a bad one because this has been the history of Freddie. He could be sailing along and you buy, buy, buy on him and you think, you're great, great, Freddie's pitching. And then he comes back and has a three-home run game. So, um, But I'm going to like Freddie in the opener in this one. Uh, originally he was supposed to start on Wednesday. I think they saved him, but the Cardinals gave him the extra day off. Bullpen is rested uh, after having the Thursday, a much needed Thursday, but I like Freddie Peralta. Yeah, I mean, if he wants to have a bad game, Chuck, that's cool. We're down with mm -hmm. that. We could use that. Uh, and a bad game for Freddie Peralta is giving up, what, three runs? We're really good at scoring three runs, Chuck. We can do that. Uh, Pitching-wise for the Cardinals, uh, a guy that uh, has dealt with some injuries over the years, uh, last year was a tough year for him. Previously, he was an all-star, though. It's a non-starter. Ryan Helsley, the closer for the St. Louis Cardinals, currently tied for the league lead in saves with seven, uh, has looked filthy so far this season, Chuck. And uh, that's been a problem for the Cardinals for, uh, going back to last year was uh, being able to finish off games when they did have the lead. It seemed like they constantly were mm -hmm. coughing things up. Well, this year, things have been different in that bullpen. They've added uh, Andrew Kittredge, who they got from the Rays. He's been fantastic. JoJo Romero's been pretty good from the left side. 
Uh, and then you've got Giovanni Gallegos, who he's up and down, but it, he's been decent enough where the bullpen hasn't been blowing saves. And Housley, uh, outside of one game where he didn't pitch very well, has been really, really good. So uh, he's a guy that I think if uh, you know they can bring him in at least in two games because the ninth inning's been his. That's been the they don't bring him in just to get him out in the eighth and bring him back in the ninth. It's the ninth inning. That's it. He's not expected mm-hmm. to throw any more or any less than that. Um, if he's getting into games, that means the Cardinals are winning. And, uh, that means he's going to be a key to the, to the victories for this weekend. So, uh, looking forward to it, man. Uh, what's Me your too. prediction? Two out of three. You think a sweep for the Brewers? What are you going with? No, I, 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 I'm hoping the Brewers can at least take two or three. How's the weather, by the way, going to be there uh, this weekend? Uh, that's a great question. I, I, I didn't check. The, up I did I not check do. the weather for this weekend. <laughs> I thought about going down there to the series. Um, All right. Looks like a little bit cooler. High okay. of 63 on Friday, 61 Saturday, 62 on Sunday. Okay. But as of right now, no uh, no rain in the forecast. Just that's a little bit cooler. That's in Milwaukee. We'll take that in a heartbeat. So no <laughs> rain. That's that's key. So we'll get all three of these games in. Uh, I'm going to say the Brewers are going to take two or three in this series. I'm going to. I feel good about the way they're playing. Uh, just lost a series. I think the Brewers. Um, right now, I I I picked the Reds to win this division. Beginning, I'm not going to change from that, but I like the way the Brewers are playing, and I I can see them going down there and taking two or three. Yeah, um, like if I wasn't a Cardinals fan, I would I probably would agree with you just because mm-hmm. of the matchups that they got. Uh, mm-hmm. Because it is it's Kyle Gibson Friday and then it's Miles Michaelis on Saturday. I don't know which one I'm going to get. I don't know. Am I going to get the good pitcher from them too? Or am I going to get the bad one? I don't know. But uh, I would pick Sonny Gray to win on, on Sunday in that matchup. It was a Ray that's going for you guys on Sunday. So give yeah. me Sonny Gray there. But um, yeah, it's going to be tough for the Cardinals to take two of three, but stranger things have happened. So we'll have to watch and find out exactly what happened. So, Thank you guys for uh, being a part of this crossover episode of uh, Locked on Cardinals and Locked on Brewers. Man, uh, thank you for making it your first listen every day. If you haven't already, please give both of us a follow on Twitter. Actually, you can find me at LO underscore Cardinals and at JD Sports Radio. Chuck, you got to spell your name for everybody who's listening audio-wise because they're going to not have any idea how to do it. Chuck Freeman, F-R-E-I-M-U-N-D. Chuck Freeman, at Chuck Freeman, F R. E I M U N D. I missed reading Rick Hummel's stuff. The commissioner, he's always great when he came to Milwaukee oh, yes. and covered him. The commission miss him. And my good buddy Matt Pauly is the post game host on KMOX. So uh, shout out to him. I know he l- watches your videos and all that. So um, yeah, my uh, two connections there from and the St. Louis. But yeah, we're gonna miss like the, the commission coming to town when the Cardinals come into town here because it's always miss him and his hat. Yeah, yeah. Well, Cardinals have dealt with a lot of loss in the last couple yeah. of years as far as legends, uh, both on and off the field for uh, for their franchise. So it hasn't been easy. But yeah, Hummel, definitely somebody that's uh, been missed. And you need yeah. to go ahead and tell uh, tell Uke we said hi as well. well. Or, former Cardinal legend Bob Euchre as well. Yes. So uh, Make sure cards. you guys like and subscribe on YouTube. Help our channel and our love for the Cardinals and the Brewers grow. You guys are the best fans in baseball for a reason, and we'll see you guys next time on Locked on Cardinals and Locked on Brewers.